Hello everybody, I'm back. Um, I just got this uh, book this week and I've uh, been waiting for it for a long time and it's pretty cool. I ordered it um, because of the cover looked pretty interesting um, and uh, since I like uh, fantasy art so I decided to order it and the reason why if I'm uh, if you guys uh, just in case um, I'm gonna talk a little bit low because it's still early and uh, everybody else is still asleep I guess but this is the best time to do a video because everybody is quiet also um, the dogs you don't hear the dogs barking so all right, this book is by um, <clears throat> uh, Steve Bermont, and uh, he does a lot of like uh, fantasy work, fantasy artwork and stuff. So this is really awesome, and let's see if this book is a winner. And when I'm saying if it's a winner, that it's got good techniques and good methods. Usually, I get books that have good methods and good techniques and that's what I always look for in a book books that have good methods and good techniques and that's what's really important <coughs> like the old saying you can't you can't judge a book from its cover you got to open the book and see what's inside so that's what we're going to do right now And so far, the book has some pretty interesting artwork. Mostly, you know, fantasy stuff. And uh, it's got a whole bunch of um, cool mythology type of artwork, which is really cool. That's what I like. Pencil techniques. So since the, I'm gonna have to show you vertically but it's got a lot of cool stuff. Pencil techniques. Inking. All types of pens we need. The skeletal part of the body, which is the gesture. The figure in action. The basics of figure drawing. The head and the face. Drawing the head. As you can see, um, it's made in a box shape. My greatest guess that the artist uh, did a box shape and did the segments for the nose and the mouth. And you can tell by the lines and indicated what the eyes are. And then after that, he did the whole face. In other words, he did probably something. Let me get some paper here. <clears throat> something like this. And I know um, I got videos uh, showing you guys something like this. This would be the eye line. And then he did the shape of the head. All the way to the top. Then he did the shape of the bottom part of the head. And the eyes.
or what he did was he probably did which I show you right now he probably did the box shape first right with the grid lines and before he did the head he probably did the segments for the eyes yes then the segment for the nose and the segment for the mouth yeah I think that's what he did so he started shaping the head and then yeah that's more better now see that's what he did and then he did the features and he did that triangle this didn't come out so good of course because it's made in ink so the line should be a little bit further to the center so this is just a demonstration I'm showing you guys so that's what he did with this and then the same thing with this he did the same process with the profile a box shape the lines the segments for the features and then he started shaping the head now this seems pretty simple and I've shown you guys something like this before but a little bit more different a different approach the same thing you could probably do this with a woman let's try this with a woman And I think, uh, yeah, it has a woman right here. So let's do this one with a woman. Yeah, vertical line. And a horizontal line. <clears throat> Except that the eyes are below this time. But you can do it this way also. But if over here, you can see that the eyes are a little bit lower. So we're going to try to capture that. We'll do another line underneath. Another line for the nose. And this will be the chin line right here. <coughs> and we'll do her head. And her jaw, straight down, her jaw goes straight down. Then we can start adding her eyes. So that worked out pretty well. We're gonna do it in ink so you can see more of the details. Start out with a box shape first. Just as I did up in the, the top one for the male. And since her eyes are below, you could actually do, you know, just the eyes like this. The segments first below and the mouth and then you start shaping the head and then after everything is done the ears actually are placed and they actually look like they're more outside the box especially the male character the ears actually come out so it's a pretty good effective uh, method. It's pretty much like I've been showing you guys. And uh, of course, the three quarter view um, is sort of like a circle. And you do the same thing, the same box shape. You can tell that he did some sort of box shape right here, see? 
And this is pretty easy. So all you gotta do with this is, without the box, my greatest guess is, is something like this. So let's concentrate with this one right here. This will be the center of the face. The eyes, the nose, the mouth. And then he did sort of like a triangle coming down like that, connecting it to the front line, see? That's what he did over here. So that's the same thing he did here. And then start shaping. First, let's uh, do the features. Nose. The mouth. And then the ears. And then we can do the rest, the shape of the whole head and the jaw, like underneath where the jaw is. Now this is just a quick demonstration I'm showing you guys. So that's pretty much. So you could use, you know, <clears throat> the box shape or just simply draw the face just like out of the blue moon. You can tell this is sort of like uh, the Loomis method in a way. Sort of like the slice part of the head. And notice he used box shapes. You see, a box shape like this. If you look at, you follow the line, the line goes up this way and box shape. So in a way he did something like the Loomis method, but more like a boxy shape for the three quarter view. So let's see if we can do something like that. side oval on the side of the head and he did a sort of like a box shape you see a box shape here and another box shape here of course just like the Loomis method it's gonna be the ear line see straight down and then the other side of the face so that's what he did here and I think he did the same thing here too all right, let's go on with the uh, book. And if I could show you some more demonstration, I, I will, because I wanna show you some other cool stuff. Here we have the hand method, which is pretty cool. Um, it tells you step-by-step step how to do a hand. And most comic book artists actually do stuff like that, or they actually visualize shapes in doing hands. So we have the knuckles, you could start off with the shapes, the lines, and then after that, the knuckles, and then form the uh, cylinders for the hands, and then do an outline for the hand right here, like you see over here. And these are more like dramatic, dynamic hands, which is pretty cool. Here is again, <coughs> excuse me gesture for the figure so the gesture right here well actually this is more like the the rendered Pencil techniques. 
how to do highlights with uh, using the eraser. You could shade in and then use highlights. I'm gonna try that, that seems pretty cool. Here's the gesture of the figure right here. tribal warrior and here we go again with the gesture again these are other techniques And this is sort of like, you know, it's the same thing like I've been showing you guys. And all you have to do is scroll and uh, check the rest of my library that um, I have stuff like this. That you actually do the gesture and you do the um, contour of the body. Do the outline of the body. It's a very simple process. You get a piece of paper, put it in your finger, and smudge the penciling to give it that nice effect. And then cross hatching at the same time. That's pretty cool. Look at the details on the penciling over here. Pretty interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. more details pretty cool stuff you can see a whole gesture here a whole outline of the figure this is a good way in um, doing hair that's pretty cool. The pirate. How to do a pirate. You can see this is sort of like a gesture. Very easy stuff to do. You can actually, instead of using the whole stick figure, you can use pretty much like I've been showing you guys. And let me see if I can do it here. And then you do the shapes of the contour of the body, like that. And of course you can tell that this leg is foreshortened, so he had to do some cylinders on this. Like you see here, that's why I did a cylinder on this part of the leg. And th this is pretty much what I've been um, showing you guys. Um, I've been showing you guys that this is mainly that when you do a gesture, you're working with three parts of the body. 
one, two, three, except that I do it a little bit different. I actually start with the torso, the center, the torso, and the pelvic first. Then I start doing all the other details. So you can see another layer of outline here. So that's what he does. He does another layer of outline, especially on this part of the body here and the arm, then this arm right here, and the neck, he does the neck. So that's how you do this. After that, you add in the clothes, the details, then after that, you make it look like this. So you're rendering little by little until you refine the whole drawing. This is a cool way how to do a skeleton step by step by starting with a box shape like always. This is sort of like the panel. Don't pay no attention to this. It's this that you gotta pay attention to, the box shape. So this is the panel right here. The box shape is what's important. You do a circle in the box shape, you do a block square, and then you do segments for the eyes, and then little by little, you start forming a skeleton. So that's pretty easy. And this is the finished rendering drawing of the pirate with the octopus. And then he refines the whole drawing afterwards, like finalizes everything afterwards. So there's three words you gotta remember is render, Actually, blocking, render, and refine. Those are very important words you gotta remember, um, especially when you're reading art books. Let's see if this got, this is pretty cool, The Enchanted. This kind of reminds me of this Spanish movie from Spain, it's called The Liberant, uh, something like that, uh, that it had to do with a, a fairy a little girl that actually, it's a very good movie. I actually have it in my playlist of movies. I, ha I have so many playlists, so you gotta check out a whole bunch of playlists that I did. So the movie's about this little girl that actually finds a little fairy. And uh, I think it's called The Fawn and the Liberant or something like that. It's a Spanish movie. Oh yeah, here it is, right here. It says it right here. I was inspired by uh, Guillermo del Toro's film, Pan, Pans and Liberth. That's the name of the movie. So he actually uh, got the idea from the movie, so he did his own. The movie's about, um, it's a very good movie. It's about a Spanish civil war that happened in Spain. And of course, you know, way, way back in World War II, you know, there was a dictatorship, the, you know, the fascist against the uh, rebels. So the rebels actually, um, they got helped by the communist and, you know, the fascist was against the communist. So it's a very good movie. It's a, it's a little bit of um, history and it's a little bit of um, fantasy. So I really recommend you guys to see the movie. I forgot the name of it again. It's called Pans and Liberth. It was made in Spain. Very good movie. So he got the idea from the movie, which is really cool. I like this. Awesome. I like the way he did um, the gesture. Like I said, you, you know, you could get ideas from movies and make your own characters. But it actually... Um, the monster doesn't, well, I think the monster looks like this. I'm not really sure. I have to see the movie again in order to find out if the monster looks like this. But the monster in the movie wasn't evil. The monster was sort of like a, a, a guardian angel or something that was helping the little girl. And the little girl, I mean, it's a, it's really sad. I mean, you have to see the whole, it's in Spanish, but it's subtitled in English. And uh, I'm one of those people that I'm very, very open-minded. Uh, I have um, several of my movies are 
or different languages. Like for example, I have, it was called the downfall that when Hitler was underneath the bunker, uh, very good movie, very excellent movie. And it was the movie how the Germans actually suffered by communist, uh, they were you know, being bombed by communist soldiers in, in World War II in the last days of Ber Berlin. I have like several movies, um, one with Alec Guinness, which is a really good movie. So it's also on my playlist, uh, trust me, I got all these movies on my playlist, uh, World War II movies and stuff. Especially with um, Anthony Hopkins also, um, uh, he, uh, he actually played Hitler in the movie. There were actually like three people that played Hitler uh, Peter Sellers did Hitler in the movie uh, Soft Beds and Hard Battles and, uh, and Alec Guinness uh, I think it was called The Last Days as you can see it's got more ideas This reminds me of this movie I saw. Um, well, I haven't gotten it yet, but I'm, uh, it's sort of like in France. Dr. Malabu or something. It was, a, <coughs> it was like sort of like a gothic French movie, but I forgot the name of it. But it's something like that. So I gotta admit, this artist actually has a great imagination and just like me, as you can see, this is sort of like a stick figure gesture and he uses sort of like a bean shape for the whole body. It's a really practical technique. My greatest guess, he would do this body like this. Because um, I'm sort of like guessing, you know, on some of the techniques it's precise, but I'm sort of like guessing that he would do a gesture, something like this. I'm gonna see if I can do that. And mostly these type of gestures are done by a lot of uh, cartoonists and artists. and So I always leave the head for last. And he does sort of like a bean shape like that just to give it that form on the body. Then he does a belt, sort of like a waistline here, and then he does a V-shape for the crotch area. Then, the, since that leg is foreshortened, he would probably use uh, cylinders. Then this part over here, he sort of like inserts out the body, the leg, sorry. But this side over here is sort of like uh, cylinders. And this arm goes back. This other arm goes back. So yeah, I think he does something like that. Ooh, my leg hurts. Wow. It's like a sleep and it hurts. It's just this chair that I'm sitting at. It's very uncomfortable. So I'm going to have to learn how to sit with both of my feet down. So, okay, so then this is what he did, people. So he did a gesture like that. That's what he did. Then he did the shape of the bean shaped body. And of course he did a cylinder here. And then this one he did regular outlines, sort of like inserting. And what I'm saying inserting is like, there's a part of a body like this and you're inserting out the shape of the leg. That's what I'm actually demonstrating over here. I just, uh, I just don't know another way of explaining it, but this is the only way I can try to un tell you pretty much how you can understand that you insert part of the body out. So that's what he did. Um, 
pretty much what he did here and stuff. Actually, you can see it over here. Okay, so let's keep going because I want to show you some cool techniques. This is uh, doing more exercises with paint and color. Pretty cool. This is a good way of doing a face also, the, using the skeleton technique. Very practical. I'm gonna show you how you do that one. Let me see. Since I'm into faces, you know, so I might as well show you this. Here is the oval for the face, vertical line for the uh, center. Two lines, horizontal line for the eyes, for the eye sockets. Here would be the nose and the mouth. So my greatest guess is that he did the eyes, the sockets first. The opening for the nose, usually the skeletons use it. The, the skeleton skull have that shape of a nose like that. So like a triangle. He would, he would, right here would be the mouth, and then he did the uh, cheekbones, like that, like that. So usually in comic books, which I'm gonna show you, there's a technique in drawing comic book faces. They use something like this and a little hint of sockets. Then they'll just do a regular nose, the mouth and all that. So it's like they do half skeleton, half skull and half uh, face. But this is the same thing as you see over here. Of course, it's always good to use the real skull. You can see that the, when you look at the skull, the sort of the shape goes tapered in, see? It's sort of like tapered in. From the top of the head, is tapered. And the bottom also is kind of like tapered, but actually comes out, see? Sort of like comes out. You can see the shape coming out. In other words, if you were to do something like this, It would be right here, the neck. The eye level would be around here. And then the eye sockets, of course, is gonna be big. The eye sockets, the nose. And um, the temple. And the cheekbones right here, see? The mouth is right here. And of course, the head shape is going to be bigger and then tapered at the same time. So you could do a line like this, tape, uh, sort of like a tapered line. And then the, the jaw sort of comes out like this, sort of like a curve coming out like this. And it goes straight down to the chin, see? Curves out and it comes out. So you can do something like that if you want. All you have to do is uh, try to like, you know, get a skull and study it, the shape of the head, you know, the proportions of the skull. Okay. All right, so here we have guns and weapons, usually like uh, the other books that I've shown you that everything is made out of shapes. You know, you use shapes to make weapons and guns. That's pretty cool. Of course, the character is actually holding guns upward. And this is the... Um, <clears throat> the rendered drawing until he does the refinement of the drawing. Here again, he uses the paper to smudge. 
I usually use my finger, but uh, you know what the thing with the finger is? That you get your fingers dirty, so it's, I think it's better to use a little piece of paper to smudge your work. There's also the um, pen, the mechanical eraser that actually is good. You could use that. That's an awesome drawing right there. It's actually the finished process. Here we have the gargoyle, how to do a gargoyle. And of course, you know, you need some type of reference from, you know, those European countries. Mostly a lot of European countries are very, very Gothic and they actually have gargoyles. Gargoyles everywhere and all the churches that they have, they have, especially in Spain. In Spain, they have a whole bunch of churches and Gothic churches made by Germanic and Roman architecture. Um, so they have, how do you call it, uh, like statues and all kinds of uh, Gothic figurines hanging around. Really grotesque stuff that they have around. I gotta admit, Europe is a very fascinating continent. Uh, I, all of Europe is interesting, especially Spain, France, England, Germany. But they uh, have a very uh, incredible, uh, I wouldn't say it's scary, but to some people it would probably be really scary. Uh, you know, their culture, the agriculture of the way they uh, built their churches and stuff. You'll be surprised. Um, I've read, uh, I've seen a lot of documentaries in Spain and in France uh, where you see a whole bunch of Gothic, uh, Germanic, Vikings, and Celtic ruins. Uh, and you have also um, in Spain there were the also Druid uh, culture. And because uh, there's a part of Spain, part where my ancestors came from, they were like very Celtic. In Spanish, they're called the Gallic people, Gallegos. Uh, so those people, um, actually, which I'm sort of like 100% atheist, but up in the north of Spain, believe me, they actually worship, uh, you know, witchery and sorcery and all that kind of crap. So it is what it is. So yeah, it's um, you'll see a whole bunch of Gothic statues in Europe. It's really cool. So you get ideas, you know, do your own gothic superheroes. That's how they created a uh, Hellboy, by using gothic uh, statues and stuff. So that's it for this book. It's called How to Draw Fantasy Art and Created Amazing Fantasy Characters by Steve Bermont. Okay, so we're going to continue with some cool techniques. And like I showed you, you can do these type of techniques. It actually works out. And let's do it bigger this time. And then we'll go on with some more methods. Let me uh, get some cool pictures or real faces that we can use for refer like reference. So we'll start with her. We're going to use different techniques and we'll use, you know, f like real face drawings. And this is really close to real people. And plus what I like about this book that it has real people so we can use faces like this. So this is another great book, Drawing uh, Likeness by Douglas Graves. Very good book. So we'll start with her. And we'll put a picture here and we'll start. All right, so we'll use a triangle shape. Not sure, sorry, a rectangle shape. What am I saying? You know, my friend uh, from Facebook, he told me that it's best to, because he knows I have a problem with grammar and sometimes I, hard, I have a hard time speaking. And... Um, in order to do a perfect tutorial, you definitely need peace and quiet. So, and plus, you it's the right time to do, and today is the right time to do a video. Everybody's quiet, 
there's not too much noise. And I think that's why um, sometimes I can't speak right. It's like I start losing track of what I'm saying. And the worst part of all of this, people, is that when you're on medication, it kind of makes you drowsy, tired. I'm supposed to take a medication right now, but I'm going <clears> to <throat> wait till I finish doing my video. So, okay, so we start off by looking at her face and we measure her eye segments. So her eye segments will start out with... Uh, Usually we'll start in the center, visualize where the center is. So the eye segments should be around here. This is the other side of her eye. And I want to make sure I get this right, that it's actually even. So let me see if I can find, uh, I know I have it here someplace, my ruler. So I have a ruler here someplace, but I don't know where I put it. I'll look for it. No, I think I left it. Yeah, I think I left it at my job. Or it probably fell out of the... Uh, Yep, there's a, a metal ruler that I usually use, but I'll look for it. Oh, here it is, I found it, I found it, I found it. Then also my friend told me that I should learn how to speak a little bit slower and just take my time when I speak, so maybe that's it. But you know, my grammar is not perfect because of the um, uh, way, way back, uh, I was put in special classes and uh, that kind of messed me up. The, the problem is when I was in special classes, um, the education wasn't very good. And uh, usually when people can't speak English, and I was a kid that time, so they put me in special classes because of that. But I think everybody tells me that it was discrimination what they did to me, like way, way back. Um, so I didn't have a very good um, childhood. So at the same time, um, you know, things were happening in my house, you know, a lot of abuse and... Um, a lot of bullshit, especially when it has to do with religion. So yeah, I went through a lot of shit when I was a kid. But then little by little, I, you know, I started adopting and, and my thing was about art. So I loved art. Not everybody actually, you know, agree with me when it came to the things that I loved or the things that I believed in or the music that I liked. Or the music that, you know, the, like the, the kind of music that I liked. So, so I always tell everybody, man, be yourself, man. Don't let people actually, <clears throat> you know, make you something that you're not. So you have to be, that's why I tell everybody, that's why we have different fingerprints. Because we all have something different in all of us. Um... And I believe that, you know, that we all come with some type of, um, some type of destiny. And one thing you have to try to remember is that you should never let anybody, um, tell you, you know, who you are or what you're going to be in the future. Cause there's, there's, trust me, it happened to me. There's been a lot of people that have lied to me, especially when it comes to religion about, you know, things that I was going to be, and sometimes you actually have that desperation that, oh, wow, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a lot of women, I'm going to have a lot of money, and that's all lies, you know, you, so you have to believe in yourself, you know, that no one can tell you your future, you are the only one that can make your future, so I always recommend everybody to judge your own self, believe in your own self, don't believe in stupid nonsense like, uh, you know, these spiritual people or 
uh, or you know mediums and stuff like that because they all lies trust me they all lie so you have to be really careful with these individuals um, unfortunately my family was into that crap you know these spiritual believers and mediums and stuff let me get a better pencil here and I'll have a I'm gonna have to find something here a bigger pencil so give me a minute guys Some extra pencils in here and stuff. I got this, and I also have this one, it's pretty good, I guess. I just gotta sharpen it. So, yeah, people actually believe in this uh, nonsense and stuff. So, you'd be surprised. Uh, I had families that actually couldn't sleep at night because you had all these spiritual people, you know, telling them and mediums that. They had some type of dark spirit. They did the same thing with me too. So so it turned out to be that I never had nothing bad. I didn't have any spirits. The problem is that there were a lot of uh, abuse going on in my family. And, uh, you, know, you know, I was abused when I was a kid. And uh, I actually have a playlist, if you guys are interested, of children being abused. Um, and I'm really against people that actually abuse their children I hate that especially animals I can't stand all these grown men showing off with their weapons actually shooting innocent animals like deers and raccoons and all that stuff it's disgusting it's really to me that's not a man so so that's the way it is um so, you, you know, there's, there's parents that have children and they actually abuse them. They bring them in this world and they abuse their children and stuff. So, and you should never abuse your children when it comes to religion, have them believe in nonsense. Never lie to your kids that your kids will be, um, yeah, how do you, uh, tor uh, actually uh, haunted by demons or spirits or this and that you have to believe in yourself that's why I'm a uh, you know I'm a hundred percent atheist and that's the way it's gonna be so looks like it broke these pencils gotta sharpen them real good but not too sharp or else they actually break okay it's good now so I actually recommend everybody, you know, not to believe in nonsense. So you might want to do uh, some of this stuff ghostly because that's the uh, the only way that you can do this a little better. Do it ghostly. So far, the box shape actually works out pretty good. So so now I'm gonna you know start working with um, her features, her eyes. Now, like always, I'm not very good doing um, reference, so I'm going to just try my best to do her eyes. So like I'm, like I'm saying, you know, people, try to believe in yourself, don't believe in nonsense. And also, another thing, don't believe in politicians, because politicians, they all lie, you know, so... You know, a lot of stuff doesn't make any sense. This country is a big mess. We're actually worried about other countries and the problem is in this country. So, you know, it's, I'm pretty sure this actually happens in, in lots of countries that, you know, politicians actually are not using their heads. So, yes, you know, believe in yourself. Always believe if you want to be an artist, if you want to be a singer, if you want to be whatever you want to be, believe in what you believe in, and that's it. You know, don't let people actually 
change you. And like I said, everyone is different. Everything, you know, the things, uh, because you might be the same race. You could be, for example, I saw a documentary that was pretty interesting. Um, that there was, um, they came from the same country and the same race. They were white Caucasian. I think it was from Switzerland. And uh, both people were different, you know. Another person was uh, more liberal. Another person was more like on the right, you know, sort of like very right uh, politically, which I really don't give a shit about politics, but that's how it was. And the other person was sort of like uh, the artist uh, and, the, and also an atheist at the same time. And the other person was a believer. So, you know, not everybody is the same. Like, for example, me and my brother were totally different. Two different worlds. And uh, it's the same thing with your sister. If you have a sister, you know, you're... There's going to be a... You can't force people to be something that they're not. Or believe in something that... There's no proof of it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I always tell everybody, okay, if this actually exists, then show me proof, you know what I mean? Because I'm sort of a, a skeptic also at the same time. I want to see proof that there is a God, that there is, that Jesus actually existed, this and that. I want to hear proof because, you know, I really think that, you know, that you can't really believe in nonsense until you have actual proof that it, it really existed. And there's no proof. There's no proof of anything because a lot of things are uh, do not make any sense. You know, like for example, why is there suffering in this world? So I I say to myself, oh, everybody actually says to me um, that oh, we're the world. The reason why the world is the way it is is because it's God's purpose. So if this is God's purpose of children with cancer and people suffering because of wars and diseases and famine, and this is God's purpose, then, you know, I don't want to be anything. I just can't believe. I would not accept it. You know, so that's, that's the reason why I'm 100% atheist. Um, so it's beginning to look a little bit like this woman right here. So everybody have their own beliefs. And I know I have a lot of friends on Facebook that, you know, they actually criticize me, Spanish and English. Why am I atheist? Well, that's, I'm atheist because of a lot of things and uh, ex experiences that I've went through. I went through a lot of bullshit as a kid in because of religion bullshit religion and that bullshit reli re religion most of it and i explained to you before is uh santeria that's uh that's a religion that doesn't make any sense it never did and these people that practice these type of things they actually lie to everybody they lie to you all this stuff you'll be surprised i've had members in my family that they couldn't concentrate um, thinking that they were because if you believe in someone that tells you that you have a dark spirit on you then you're never going to progress and that's the way I see it okay so that's pretty much what I did here using the block shape it doesn't look exactly like her but maybe if I you know do some you know shading it might look like her so let's see, we'll try to do the shading part. And as a kid, believe it or not, um, I was almost, um, you know, killed because of religion. 
And I'm not going to tell you the, the details, but I had somebody in my family that actually almost, almost killed me because of religion. Because she actually believed in this uh, Santero, one of these crazy mediums. Because to me, they're all crazy in the head. And uh, she believed in all this nonsense. Uh, so this member of this family, of my family, uh, couldn't look at me thinking that I had something bad in me. So, you know, religion to me, um, it's very dangerous. Um, I actually, you know, I have friends in, in Facebook that actually believe in nonsense, but I try not to, uh, you know, as long as they don't talk to me about it, you know, and I, they already know how I feel about religion, so I try not to bring up the, uh, the issue and stuff, so. To me, I believe in, yeah, monsters and demons, but only in movies, and that's it. I think the fact that people actually created monsters and demons is because, you know, there was a quote that actually my grandfather, my, not my grandfather, my uncle actually told me that why people believe in these things or like, you know, they want to believe that there's something else out there, like an, uh, an alien, they want to believe in monsters is because man wants to believe in something different and, and it's always been like that. Man created gods. Man created uh, demons and monsters. Just like those churches that I just showed you in those pictures. And that's part of life. Uh, they think that the reason why there's bad things happening in this world because they think that there's some type of uh, uh, entity that does all this. And it's not really that. It's really us. Man is evil. Man is really bad. There is no unity between man. That's why I like the songs, you know, song by John Lennon that he actually pins, you know, pinpoints the truth that it's better to believe in yourself and believe in love, believe in peace. Um, John Lennon actually sings it in a song called Imagine, Imagine There's No, no Heaven, No Hell Below Us, that everyone living as one in peace in the world, so... So, you know, I don't really believe in nonsense, you know, I actually believe in life, you know, I believe in love, I believe in people, you know, and it's sad how um, children in this world, they come to this world and they are man manipulated by parents and believing in, in nonsense and believing in war and believing, you know, um, stupid things, you know. And then we have also politicians and leaders that lie to young people that you must fight for country, you must fight for land, and you must fight for your for God and country and all that. And they actually use religion to actually lie to people and stuff, so. All right, so it doesn't look like her, you know? So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna work with another technique. And we're going to use the Serpino method. We'll start out with a vertical line. This will be the eyebrow line, the nose line, mouth line, and the chin line. And now what we're going to do is the segments of her eyebrows. So we'll do a hint of her eyebrows. Like that at the same time we'll do the eye right here at the same we can actually use indicate the eyes at the same time so we're going to do it differently sir pino um does it like both ways he'll use a uh, horizontal line for the the face and sometimes he'll use he'll start off using the uh, vertical line so so we're going to try to do it the um, Serpino way. Now the next thing we'll do is the shape, the contour, 
above the head. And the shape on the side. So I have to make sure that both sides are even the temple. I want to make sure I capture the temple. I want to make sure that everything is even. And I noticed what he did was that when he did this method, he did something. He did the ears. That's what he did. He did the ears. And then he did the jaw shape. That's what he did. And that's when he started doing the contour of the face. That's what he did. Measure out the proportions. So that came out a little bit, not like her, but you know, the, the proportions came out pretty good. Then you start doing the, the features. Let's do this again. So I want to get this right. This time, instead of using the eyebrows, we're going to do the eye shapes. Right there. Nose, the mouth, and then we'll do the chin right there. Then we can do the eyebrows. That's better. Now we can do the shape. So what you're doing here is sort of like three, sh three lines here. One, two, three. Three parts. One, two, three. Now we can start working with the hint of the ears. It's sort of like you're using your mind to see the shape of the face. Now, even though <clears throat> I'm sort of atheist, but I really do believe that we all do have um, power in our brains. And the power meaning that, not power that we could actually, you know do powers or all that kind of stuff like in the movies or comic books or anything like that but the power of believing in yourself and the power of correcting mistakes in your life and the power of fixing things in your life that went wrong and trust me I, I've done a lot of fixing in my life um, and the power of knowing what's good and what's right and the power that you can do anything, like right now, I tell everybody, you can draw, you can do anything, you can play guitar if you really put your mind to it. Like for example, if it wasn't that I had this accident in my finger, I was playing the guitar really good. I actually played the guitar by ear, but since I had this freak accident uh, on my finger, um, now I can't play the guitar like I used to. But unfortunately, you know, things are like that. And I don't believe in miracles that this finger is ever going to be cured. You know, it's, it's, it's like it won't bend anymore. And in order to play the guitar, you need your, all, you know, all your fingers to play the guitar. So the only thing I can do now is play 
mm, guitar with probably three fingers and use some type of method in playing the guitar. So, but you could overcome anything, man. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff, a lot of crazy stuff, how people actually do progress if, if something doesn't work. And uh, you have to believe in yourself. And you can do anything you want. You can be an artist, you can be a singer, you can be an actor if you believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you can be almost anything you want. And I actually really believe that. Also, you know, one thing that's very important, people, is that if you see your children, and that's something I never had in my life, if you see your own children or kids, you know, with talent, and uh, it's because they're born with something special, they're born to be something, or, you know, they... I'm not going to believe the fact that there were probably something in, in another life or anything like that, but, you know, people have talent. They come in this world, how do you call it, that they, they're they special and they could be anything. So if you see your little girl or your little boy with special talents, then, you know, invent, you know, invest in them. Invest in that they want to be something. Believe in them. You know, don't believe in nonsense or other bullshit nonsense. You know, that's something I never had. Believe in your children. Believe that they can be something in their in their life. That's a, <clears throat> I always tell that to everybody. I don't have children because, of, of course, of my illness. And I know many of you that are my uh, friends of mine on Facebook already know my illness. Um, so. I um I wish I had kids but um I'm not even ready to have any kids especially in the world where we live in today there's so much chaos and I you know I've heard horror stories of uh, parents that have children they actually born deformed at the same time they come in this world with cancer and I'm not trying to become, you know, like negative or anything like that. But that's why you know, I don't, I don't have children because I know things like that could happen. So, and it's sad. I've seen a lot of, you know, things that have made me cry. Little, you know, kids with cancer, uh, and their parents still pray for their ch their kids, and they still die. So that's one of the reasons why I'm atheist. Uh, because when I see children that come in this world with cancer or they have some type of deform, it just makes me really sick to my stomach to think that actually people believe in a God. And when you see these things in this world, it's kind of hard to believe in a God. So, so far, it looks a little bit like her. So I see the world the way I see it. I, I you know, uh, the all the bullshit and nonsense that happened in this world. And of course, the problem in this world, and a lot of people actually are realizing it, um, also is because of, um, you know, religion and politics is one of the worst things there is. That's why I don't give an F or a crap about politics or religion. I vote for myself. I don't even vote. So I don't really care about politics or religion, so... Or religion. You know, it's, I believe in myself. I believe in people. I believe in life, of course, because there are a lot of good things in this world. There are a lot of beautiful things in this world, of course. And you just got to know how to live life. You know what I mean? And I have plenty of black, you know, plenty of bad experience in my life as a kid. And I'm still strong, you know. You know, my life wasn't easy as a kid. But I'm still strong, you know, I believe in myself. So that's why a lot of people, they have to believe in themselves. I have a friend from Argentina that actually believe in this nonsense. 
you know, she actually uh, she's actually being manipulated by a religion and then at the same time she's being lied to and uh, you know it hurts because you know not it doesn't hurt me but it would it's gonna hurt her in the long run thinking that she believes in something and knowing that that shit never helped you know that's uh, and I try to give her good advice to believe in herself but she doesn't want to listen so I've had people that actually send me messages, you know, uh, religion messages, all kinds of nonsense. So I just block them because I don't need religion in my life. I, I just need myself, my own conscience. That's all I need. I've been in situations in life that religion never did anything good for me. So all types of religion so yeah I just tell everybody you know believe in yourself and never force your child to believe in something stupid you know it's better to have your child or your children to believe in science believe in education believe in something that they want to study you know that's what you got to believe in believe in progress not stupid and stupid shit you know So, so far it's looking like her, but it's not, you know, like I said, I'm not very good doing reference. So it takes a lot of practice to do reference. Okay, so I'm not going to finish the whole drawing because I got more stuff to show you guys. So let's go on with my technique book. So we studied, we did this already. And we're going to do some faces for three-quarter views. And this is sort of like comic book style. And I'm going to do it in ink at the same time. So you guys are going to get an idea of what I'm doing here. This is another good one for comic books. And this is sort of like the Loomis method. Remember that this side of the circle is going to be sliced off a little bit because the head, especially in a three-quarter view, is not that round. So you always have to keep that in mind. So start here, start here, and then do the cheekbone. The cheekbone's right here. The other cheekbone over here. And then slowly, like always, just like the Loomis method, with the hairline and the nose line, right around here you will see the oval of the side of the head, that oval shape, that Loomis oval shape. <clears throat> now the regular method sometimes starts like this. They start like this, but this is something different. So they do something like that, that's the regular method. But this is like if you were working from the center and to the outside. Just like these other techniques that I've shown you before, that you actually start from the center of the face and you're working from the outside. <laughs> then now I'm going to start working with uh, the shape of the nose. First the eye line right here. Then I have the shape of the nose right here. And then all this that I did is going to actually help me form the contour of the face. See? All the way to the chin. And then we're going to visualize, your mind is going to see, your imagination will see this, the jaw line. Always remember the mouth line, because if you do the mouth line, it will help you do the jaw line better. So let's do this again. We're going to do it in pen.
you do the circle, the vertical line, horizontal line, all the lines for the features, then you're going to slice over here, then you're going to slice over here. Let's do this correct over here, see, nose, mouth, chin, cheek lines. And then you do the uh, oval for the side of the head. Do the contour, visualize where that ear line is. And you, can, you work back and forth like that if you want. Like that. And if you want, you don't really have to do that oval. You just visualize where that jaw is going to be. If you think that that's going to mess you up a little bit or kind of like confuse you, then do it this way. And then do the uh, the ear line. Another way of doing this too, you can do it this way. So visualize where all the parts are. Start with the nose, the eyes, and then you do the contour. So you could do it that way also. So there's so many ways, you're just breaking it into different ways of doing the face. Very, very simple. Okay, so let's do, if you want to do like maybe a gargoyle, I'm going to show you another way of using this technique. So we're going to do a gargoyle. We'll start, we'll do it in pencil first. And say the nose is a little bit higher. And the chin to jaw is going to be big. And then the forehead, the temple of the head. And remember, this part is going to be sliced. Then we do the cheekbones. And then the mouth line is going to be here. This will be good also if you want to do the Hulk. But we're going to do, we'll do something maybe like the Hulk or something like a gargoyle that looks like a Hulk something. So we're gonna actually work with the nose. The eyes. The other eye here. <clears throat> and then this is sort of like a hulky character. So the jaw, first we're going to do the chin big. We do like a big circle for that big chin. Then little by little, we're doing the contour of the face. Remember that this part right here where the nose line is, where that line that comes from the corner of the knot, no, that's going to help you shape the shape of, that's going to be the contour of the face. So you can do something like this. Actually, no, let's, uh, let's do that for last. First, we'll work with the jaw on this side. Because we don't want to mess this up. I don't know, it's kind of like going to 
throw me off here. So I want to do the jaw. So the jaw is going to be this big right here. So here we can work with the jaw, the ears, maybe some gargoyle ears, like that. And then we'll just leave that like that. We're just going to work with um, the details of the mouth. Remember, this is sort of like a foreshortened, so this side of the mouth is smaller. You're going to see less, and you're going to see more on this side. So we want to make sure that this part of the face is correct, especially foreshortened, okay? So you can use that same technique that I just showed you right now from this. You can actually, I should do this in ink, so that way, hold on, that way I know what I'm doing here. Yeah, it's better, because these are notes that actually took down information. It's better to do it this way, people. When you do your notes, you're taking notes down, always try to mark it in pen. It's more better, you can see it better. So you'll know what you're doing. Okay, so let's try this one here. Um, we're gonna try this technique. We're gonna try a little bit of everything and it's up to you guys to do your faces and your figures by using all these methods and techniques that I'm showing you. And even if you learn the techniques and the methods, I really recommend you guys to use reference. There's nothing better than, you know, than using met, um, reference. Okay, so now I'm going to visualize where the tempo is, and then I'm going to do start with this, this eye here. Then I'm going to start with this eye here, closer to the vertical line, because it's foreshortened and it's perspective. So I visualize the, the nose line here. I visualize the mouth line here then the chin line here, and then the um, eyebrow line here. Very simple. All you have to do is start off with um, the first segments, which is the vertical line. Sorry, the horizontal line first. It really doesn't matter, as long as you get the proportions right. Vertical or horizontal line. Then the temple, where the eye is going to be at, you start the eyes first. Or little tiny vertical lines for the eyes. It really doesn't matter. But I think this is your best bet. Then your mind, your imagination is going to start seeing the nose line here. The mouth line here. And your chin. And then the eyebrow. See? So it doesn't look like a face yet. But it's just a gesture of a face. So what do we do next? Well, we start is we start working with the planes. The planes over here, the contour over here, the side of the head, the hairline, and we visualize sort of like a diamond shape. That would be the hairline. And then we visualize little by little. We start seeing our heads or start, we'll start seeing the shapes form up, especially when it comes to the jaw. This will be the cheek line. You could do a line like this to indicate where that jaw it will be at. And then another line like this, so that way you'll see where the jaw is going to be at. Or another line like this. You know, sort of like you, it's sort of like a visual. But you don't really have to do all these lines. You actually visualize this, people. Ghostly and visualize it at the same time. And when I'm saying ghost, is like, you know, instead of doing a hard line like this, you're doing a very light line, which is very ghostly line, okay? Then you can start working with the nose, triangle shape, and when on when the triangle shape, you don't use a you know a straight triangle, just do a visual triangle shape like that, very visual. 
ghostly. Everything ghostly. Back of the neck. And that's it. So we got this one done. So let's do something else here. Um, we're gonna do the front view, but comic book style. I'm gonna use this technique and I gotta actually do this in ink also, but I'll do it later on. So I have an idea what to do here. We'll use this page. Or actually we'll erase this. This didn't, this didn't come out so good. So we will erase this right here. Okay. And we'll do it bigger. So we'll have a better view. Just a little bit big. Regular oval. Vertical line. Start visualizing the line for the features nose mouth and the chin so this one we have to keep in mind that we have to keep both sides even so try to remember that okay but don't worry about the proportions or all that just remind yourself that when you're doing the features then you actually fix everything else so we start working with um, the eyebrows, the other eyebrow here, the nose, you know, sort of like a triangle shape for the nose, the mouth, the chin. And now the next thing we do is the ears. And we do the temples. So with this one, we're gonna start shaping the head shape. And then we start working with the ears, even though we did the ears already, but we wanna shape the ears a little bit because that's gonna actually help us indicate where the jaw is all the way down to the chin okay and then we could start working with the cheek lines which is the actually you know you could do the diamond shape for the uh, planes if you want do the diamond shape and then work with the cheekbones like this And then the bridge of the nose, the center of the nose, and the corners of the nose. And then the mouth. And then the lips. And then we have the segments for the eyes. And when I say segments, it's actually, you know, the construction lines. I hear that actually used a lot in comic books. They actually mention segments. There's several things you guys got to remember. Render. Refine. Blocking. and segments. Okay, whenever you hear an artist or an art constructor say these words, and I'm not a professional, but I'm learning these things very slowly. Blocking is when you're actually putting things in places, like the features, the nose, blocking in, you know, you know, the areas of the face or whatever. It could be anything. 
uh, render is when you're drawing the actual drawing refine is when you actually finalize the whole drawing afterwards segments is when you're using uh, construction lines indications of tiny vertical lines or it could be horizontal lines or vertical lines all that stuff so that's what this means okay so now that we did this we're gonna continue with something else we'll do another technique here we're gonna do a figure drawing um, and we're gonna practice because a lot of people definitely need a lot of uh, help with you know for shortening and I'm gonna see if I can find some more paper here well, actually we'll use the back here so for shortening you know say you're doing a foreshortening drawing of a char character for shortening you could you know start drawing your figure your gesture and I think I showed you guys this before See, this leg is coming down this way, and this leg is coming forward us. So what we're going to do is we'll do sort of like a, a cylinder shape. That's it. Not a cylinder like this, you know, like that. Just visualize a cylinder shape here in the beginning of where the hip area is. And then we start doing another cylinder shape, which is actually this is going to be the joint in front of the leg. So that will give a good effect of foreshortening. And then we'll do another leg here, which is going to be the bottom of the leg. That's, that'll be the, the bottom of the leg. If you want, you could do a line, but, you know, just do the outline also if you want. So you see a sense of a shortening here, but it's not finished yet. And then say uh, this arm is coming at us. Let's erase this over here. This arm is coming at us. So we, you know, we start off with the joint first, right here, and then we start working with this hand coming at us, this hand, you know, it's like actually coming towards us, front, front of us like that. So, so little by little, you start, you know, shaping the whole, the contour, the whole arm. And I'm going to do this, you know, I'm not going to finish the drawing. I'm just going to give you a hint of how you do this. And this arm more back. And always, I always leave the head for last. It gives a better sense of doing the proportions better when you actually leave the head for last. So now you can start shaping the, the leg, the kneecap the front of the leg and this part the contour of this leg that is what you call for shortening you're for shortening your your figure drawing and then the breast like always you sort of like do a teardrop teardrop shape like that to do the the shape Okay, so we'll do this in ink, like that. So you get an idea of what I did here. and the head for last. So let's see if we can do another foreshortening over here. We'll do somebody running towards us. Again, I usually start 
with a torso and a pelvic shape first. Then there's foreshortening over here. And this hand first, and then we bring it back. So we'll do this in ink. Give me a minute, guys, for a second. Hold on. All right, back home. Okay, I'm back. So we have a character here running towards us. And we'll do the oval for the pelvic area, for the hip area. And over here, we have a cylinder, but it's coming at us. It's over here. So to do a good foreshortening here, this is what I would do. I would start out with a cylinder shape. I'm not gonna do the lines. I will do a cylinder shape like that. Then the front, just like I did over here. That's what I'm gonna do over here. Do the front and then this leg. And it, it's gonna give me a visual effect that he's run, running towards me. Then I just bring, start doing the contour, sort of like insert from the hip area. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm doing some type of insertion, inserting out the shape. That's what I'm trying to explain here. And then the foot more closer. And then we have this back here going down this way. Is So he's running towards us, see? That's, so that's another good way of doing uh, foreshortening when the character is actually, you know, running towards us and stuff, so. Okay, so that's for the figure. So we're gonna do a little bit of everything, figure and faces. So let's see, uh, do another one here. There's another one that I wanna show you guys. And then we'll call it the day. Okay, we're gonna do this one. And I'm not sure if I did this one already, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. So we'll start. We'll erase that. We don't need this one, so erase this one. And we're gonna do that technique. And I'm gonna show you how it's done. Oh, page is moving here. This will hold it, I guess. Maybe this will hold it. Okay, now we're gonna do a circle vertical line so the nose line you know in order to get something like this I would start off with the nose line first so this would be the nose line and if I want I can do a sort of like a visual effect of the triangle for the nose and right here would be my eyes right here okay 
then I'll do the mouth right here, the line for the mouth, and then the chin would be right here. So I got pretty much the gesture of a face. Now I know this, you know, this is gonna mess me up because of the, uh, but I, that will be gone once I start shaping the whole face. So I'm gonna try to make it, you know, kind of tighten in the pencil a little bit. So that way you see the, uh, the gesture of the face. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start, you know, doing um, the eyes right here, which is going to, going to be um, tiny vertical lines for the eyes. At the same time, I'm going to render it. I'm going to render in the eye. And I'm going to finish it. I'm just going to render a little hint of the eye here. So I've got the nose. I'm going to try to measure with the triangle also. So far, so good. Okay. So, um, I'm going to do the uh, eyebrows. Then, I'm going to fix the nose. Bring it a little bit higher. This bottom part of where the nostrils is right here. And then now I can start rendering the lips. And the chin. And then I can visualize where that jawline is going to be right here. So I do these little dots like that. And dots over here. And dots over here. So next thing is I connect them together to form the contour of the, the face and the head and then start shaping the face the hairline should be just like the Loomis method you know you actually you know it's, remember it's three parts one sorry one two three three parts okay it's almost like the Loomis method except that the eyes are a bit lower on this right here so let me do this in ink so you guys can see it more clear because I know the the penciling I did before kind of messed up everything here Okay, that's what I did. Then I start bringing in the face. And don't forget, tapered in. That's why you have to do these dots. That way you can figure out how is gonna, you know, how the shape of the face is going to be by doing these dots. But you're gonna visualize this and always practice by seeing shapes of people, the faces, because everybody, everybody has a different shape. So you always have to keep that in mind. So now I can start working with the bridge of the nose, which I don't know the name of this part of the nose, but anyway, if you guys are watching, if you guys can help me out, tell me what is the name of this. I keep forgetting. I think it's called the Mabula, Madula or something. I don't know. I'm not really sure. The Madula of the nose. I don't know. But anyway, you guys uh, give me an idea. See, that's something I need to... To be an artist, you need to remember all the... I mean, I, I trust me, there's a lot of comic book artists that they don't even know half of the names of the anatomy. So, um, so it's really hard. I just uh, basically, I just only remember what to do, where to start, how to do the features. That's about it. But I can't remember the names of all these strange names of the anatomy of the either the body or the face. It's just very hard. And I remember when I used to visit uh, New York, uh, the editors in Marvel Comics, they were actually talk about these things. And I said, what the hell is he talking about? You know, I, said, you know, I figured, you know, to learn how to, you know, you know, to draw comics, do you really need to know all these names? I'm pretty sure the first artists like Jack Kirby didn't even know. Maybe people like probably, uh, 
Neil Adams because they they drew more like realistic, you know, or people like um, John Buscema or you know people like uh, Andrew Loomis or Hogarth, you know, they probably knew all these names of the or uh, George uh, Bridgman, of course, he knew all these names of the anatomy. But it kind of makes you wonder, what about these ar other artists like um, Jack Kirby or, uh, you know, all these artists, that ex you know, comic book artists that existed. So, so like always, the neck, women's necks are very slender. So you always got to remember the neck is very, very slender. And this will be a part of her shoulders right here. And that's it. And I think I showed you guys before that when you're doing women's heads, especially when you're actually doing the body, you know, here's the head of the woman, and here's the torso, the uh, shoulder. Always remember that uh, you could use sort of the triangle shape in order to figure out the shape of the torso, and then also the shoulders come in further in a little bit, not too in, but you know, just comes in just a little bit in. And that would be the proportions of the woman's body. So you always have to remember that. And usually the woman's torso, of course, is smaller. And then the waist, you know, you do it, it's a little bit more bigger. So I'll do this in ink. So you guys can understand. Because penciling, you can't really see too much of the, the details. The shoulders go in. The torso and then the hip area and the pelvic right there and then the bone structure so that's another way of figuring the proportions oh there goes that dog again got the proportions correct this is another method I want to show you guys in doing the women body so let's practice that uh, we did a couple of stuff the other day on that technique but let's erase all this stuff here and I gotta go back on like maybe three or four videos back and see pretty much what I've done so I know what to show you guys next because I don't want to repeat myself and uh, I haven't had time for myself uh, just you know yesterday um, I watched a couple of good movies and uh, and today I'm off so I'll be doing more tutorials hopefully I have time to do some more tutorials for you guys so say we're gonna, you know, copy this woman over here, even though it's a different method. So we're gonna copy her. So we'll start off with usually the center line. This will be her shoulders. We'll do her torso. Women's torso is smaller. Always remember the torso of a woman is smaller. And then we'll do the um, this part of her body, the hip area. We're gonna actually visualize this. Remember where that's where you see this over here is gonna be sort of like a belt line. Of course, this is not gonna be a perfect anatomy. I'm gonna do it a little bit better. So this will be the waistline right here, the belt line. If you want to call it the belt line, call it. And then we connect it. We make that shape. Usually the women women have that very sexy shape, very slender hip area right here. And then the hips are a little bit bigger. That comes out this way. And then we'll do a sort of like an oval for that stomach area right here. And then from there, we start actually visualizing where the uh, beginning of her leg starts. So we do sort of like um, sockets like that. And then right here, this will be the cr her crotch area. So we wanna make sure we do her crotch area. So let's do this in ink so you can see this a little bit more clear. Let's put this out of the way. There's so much shit I have here, sorry. 
Um, it's just so much stuff I got here. So I want to do it in ink so you can see what I did. I started out with a gesture, the small torso area, the belt line right here, which is the waistline. I connected it right here. And then I did, you know, the shape of her hip. Women's hips are pretty big. And then now we go back up, we'll start doing her shoulders. And her shoulders are going to come in, the circle, the joints are going to come in inward a little bit. Not too out, because women's shoulders are different from men's shoulders. And then we'll do the arm. This other arm is sort of like foreshortened a little bit. So we have to make sort of like a cylinder shapes. And then we'll leave the head for last. We'll do the head. Like that. And women, trust me, the women also, their heads are a little bit bigger than the body sometimes. And then the neck is, you know, sort of like slender, like always. We do the shoulders. And for the breast, we do sort of like, uh, we do a cross. And we do sort of like teardrop shapes. But we make sure that at the end of that teardrop shapes, we do a curve. We do another teardrop shape and we do another curve. That would be the, uh, her breast right there. So, so far so good. We got the crotch area. We got the open part of her sockets over here where the hip area is. And then we can actually either do the form of her body or you can do the uh, mannequin stick figure, which is sort of like little joints that come out like this, like that. You can do that. But when you're drawing big like this, man, you, all you got to do is just do the outline of her legs right there, see? And then this leg comes a little bit further in because she's got big thighs. So that's how I would actually do this. Even though, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a different method, so. <coughs> and then her features, of course, she's looking down and her nose the mouth in there. So let's do this again on a stance or on an action pose. We'll do an action pose on this. Now, this is foreshortening. I didn't notice I didn't do any lines. I did just did the joint right here because it's going to be foreshortening. Now, this one, I'm going to do gesture lines. This part. Let me get some of a drink. Okay, again, this one is going to be foreshortened, so I didn't do any lines here, so I just did lines here. So, let's say she's swinging, or like, you know, swinging her hand with a sword or something, then this, then her head goes back. So, I'm going to do this in ink so you can see it more better. That. Just want to make sure that the proportions are okay. We have there. And it's going to be foreshortened and the foot comes back. So all I got to do now is just, you know, simply do the contour, the leg. And of course, this is foreshortened, so it's going to look more bigger because of the way I did it. You could use the oval also. The oval actually helps, especially on the foreshortened part of the body. And that's it. All right, so it looks kind of messy, so I'm gonna just throw that away. So let's start something else. Um, 
something else that I've been practicing that you guys might like. We'll do this one. Get some more paper here. All right, let's do this one. This one will start So it'll be the eye, but the eyes are going to be on top of the um, horizontal line. Nose and the chin would be here. So as we go along, we start doing the segments for the eyes. And then we make it, we shape it into a oval. So, sort of like an, uh, an egg shape. <clears throat> <coughs> we shape it into a, an egg shape. You got the eyes right there. You can start working with the eyes. Nose. Triangle shape. The eyebrows. Once we have that, we'll do the mouth. Her eyes just a little bit better. Your hairline actually starts over here. So what you're seeing here, people, is sort of like a, a U shape. But we're gonna shape that U shape into a face, sort of like if you were doing a mask. We're actually figuring the shape of her face, sort of like if you were seeing a mask, like that. See, all the way down to her chin. And do the mirror effect. Do this side first and then do this side. Don't just do here, here, here. You're just going to get, it's going to throw you off. So it's better to do the mirror effect. That you're doing this side of the face and then you're doing this side of the face right here. So as you can see, it's turning into a face. I don't know if this if the level of the eye came out good, but I always have to make sure that it that it looks okay. <clears throat> and the eyebrows. The nose. The bridge of the nose. Then the ears. And then the neck. Usually the women do not have that shape. They have more, sort of like a straight line. If I were to do that curve, then it would look more like an Adam's apple. And that's mostly a men. Men have the Adam's apple, so I want to make sure There's two things you gotta remember uh, when you draw a woman's face or a woman's head. That the, the neck is slender, it's more thinner. And a man's neck is more bigger. That's the difference between a man and a woman. And they don't have a curve underneath that where those artery lines are, where the veins are. Only men have that curve, so always keep that in mind. So she could be a princess, anything. So that's pretty much how you do this method right here. Let's try this one right here. I'm gonna see if I can remember how I did this one. Okay. This one is actually you're using an oval.
eye line, eyebrow, nose, mouth, and the chin. Then we'll start working with the ears. And then the shape of the jaw. Now we can start working with um, the features. We'll start with the nose. Go up. We'll do the eyebrows or the eyes, it really doesn't matter. And then uh, the planes. I have more books, um, which I got to show you that has to do with comic book art. Um, it's a little bit of man manga and uh, comic book style, um, but it has some pretty cool positive things with, um, with the shape of the face and at the same time the, um, the planes, because the planes are very important on the face very very important on the face so um, that's what makes your face the planes the structure of the face and the planes are like I you know keep saying to everybody it's uh, mentioning that the planes are sort of like a diamond shape um, it could be any type of shape. Uh, it depends on the structure of the face. Once you have that and you master the planes and you master pretty much of everything that I've been showing you guys, uh, then your faces will come out really cool. I mean, you'll be you'll be you'll end up doing some real cool faces. And again, I'm not a professional. I'm just showing you pretty much what I'm, you know, what I know and what I've been practicing. Okay, guys, I'll do another video after this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching and good luck with your artwork. Always practice and also use reference and draw very lightly. Sort of like ghostly image. So that way you can get everything all formed up and all everything will take place in your artwork thank you for watching